Dr. Kalevani, Associate Professor, for giving this wonderful opportunity for me and also for initiating this wonderful program for the benefit of students. Today my topic is going to be on basics of gamma imaging. Gamma imaging means nuclear medicine. The topics which I am planning to discuss today are basic principle of nuclear medicine, then working principle of gamma camera, working principle of SPECT, working principle of FIT and finally little bit about hybrid machines and fusion technology that is about SPECT CT, PET CT and PET MRI. Before going into that detail about the principle of nuclear medicine, all of you should get familiarized with the basic terminologies in nuclear medicine. First, isotope. What do you mean by isotope? Isotope means I, there are some elements which are having same number of proton but different number of neutrons in their nucleus. For example, take this hydrogen, it has one proton but no neutron. Here you see it is one proton plus one neutron. Here one proton plus two neutron. It means that same number of proton, that is element having same number of proton but different number of neutrons. This is going to be called as isotope and this hydrogen is named as hydrogen, deuterium and tritium based on the number of neutrons. Isotopes are also classified as stable and unstable. For example, take a chlorine atom. If you see here, it has 17 protons in all these three, but it has 18 neutrons here and 20 neutrons here and 19 neutrons here. So, same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. This is called as isotope. In this itself, the 17 plus 18 combination and 17 plus 20 combination are called as stable isotope. But this combination of 17 plus 19 neutrons is termed as unstable isotope and this unstable isotope is called as radioactive isotope. Then we have to see the other terminology radioactivity. What is radioactivity means? It is the property possessed by certain nucleates of undergoing spontaneous transformation of their nuclei accompanied by either emission of particles or radiation. So transformation from the parent element to the daughter element, it will emit either particles or non-particle radiation. So for example, particle radiation means alpha particle or beta particle. Non-particle means maybe gamma rays. The gradual reduction with the passage of time, that is conversion of radioactive material, that is parent element to the daughter product, it is going to have a gradual reduction with the passage of time, that is called as radioactive decay. And the types of radiation which is going to be emitted during this process may be alpha or beta or gamma rays. So this is the basics which we have to understand before going to the nuclear medicine subject. Let us see now what is nuclear medicine. Nuclear medicine is a branch of medical imaging which uses small amount of radioactive material for diagnosing or treating a disease. Nuclear medicine procedures are usually non-invasive and painless. I would like to explain in a simple language the principle behind the nuclear medicine. The radioactive material which is in liquid form 
enters into the human body through a circulatory system. When it goes throughout the body, now the patient is going to emit gamma rays. And these gamma rays are going to be captured by a device called as gamma camera. It is called as gamma camera because this is the camera which is going to capture the gamma rays Hence, it is called as gamma camera. Once the gamma rays is captured, these data are sent to the computer for processing. And once the data are processed, finally you see a beautiful image on the monitor. This is the simple principle behind nuclear medicine. The various radioactive isotopes used in nuclear medicines are listed in listed out here. The commonest isotope which we use in nuclear medicine on day to day for imaging purposes technetium 99M which is the daughter product of a parent element molybdenum 99M. Why we choose technetium 99 isotope as a basic isotope for imaging because for two reasons. One it's half-life and another one is energy. What is half-life? Half-life is the time taken for the radioactive material to decay to one half of its original value. If you look into this, technetium has an half-life of just 6 hours. So as soon as you inject, within 6 hours it will become half of that. That is the main reason we choose this as an isotope for imaging. Then another advantage is, is energy is very very less, 140 keV only. Apart from this, we also use iodine 131, gallium 67, thallium 201 for nuclear medicine studies. How we get technetium isotope? We have a generator named as molybdenum technetium generator. Have a look at this generator. This is called as alumina column where the parent element molybdenum is there. We have two needles here and we are going to put terrain saline wire in this needle and we are going to put vacuum wire in this needle. As soon as I put the vacuum wire, it will suck the terrain saline through the alumina column it comes. Now it is not going to be called as saline because when it passes through this and comes it takes away the technetium isotope from the molybdenum and comes here to the vacuum wire. Now this is the isotope which is going to be used for imaging. This is called as molybdenum technetium generator. The radioactive material technetium when we inject it goes throughout the body. We are not interested in imaging the total body. We are interested in knowing about the functional aspect of the individual organ. See, this is the modality where, apart from anatomical structure, we also see the functional aspect. That's how we differ from other modality. So, what we do is, with the radioactive material, we tag the chemical component called as pharmaceutical agent so that it goes and concentrate in a particular organ so that we can study about that. For example, I want to study about liver. You know that liver has a greater affinity towards the colloidal component. So the radioactive material when it is mixed with sulfur colloid and injected, it goes and concentrate on the liver so we can do a liver scan. Similarly, I want to study about the excretory system. What I do is with the radioactive material, I will be tagging with the DTPA. DTPA means diethylene triamine pentaacetic acid. So this component will involve in the excretory process. When I want to study about the bone scan, I will tag with the pharmaceutical agent called as MDP, that is methyl diphosphonate. So that it goes and concentrates on the marrow of the bone. So like this, for various studies we have a different pharmaceutical agent, but the radioactive material is same, that is technician 99M. 
so when i mix the radioactive isotope with the pharmaceutical agent that is called as radio pharmaceuticals now let us see about the working principle of gamma camera this was developed by hall anger at berkeley in 1957 therefore this gamma camera is also called as anger camera let us see about the fundamental working principle you see the main component in the gamma camera is a crystal can you see this yellow color this crystal which is made up of sodium iodide crystal doped with the impurity called as thallium now what happens as soon as the isotope is injected to the patient patient will be emitting gamma rays this gamma rays through the collimator it goes and strikes the crystal where the gamma rays are converted into light flashes we call as scintillation these light photons made to fall on a device called as photomultiplier tube photomultiplier tube is a device which converts the light photon into an electrical signal these electrical signal are fed into the electronic circuit for processing and finally you see a beautiful image on the monitor let me show some sample of clinical study or how the image looks you know that in ct scan we call it as hyperdense or hypodense in case of mr we call it as hyperintense or hypointense in ultrasound we call it as hyperechoic or hypoechoic but in nuclear medicine we call it as hot spot cold spot hot spot means more isotope is taken cold spot means isotope is not taken have a look here this is the thyroid scan you see the beautifully the two lobes of thyroid right lobe and left lobe and little bit of salivary glands are seen this is normal uptake of isotope normal thyroid scan and this is the coloring pseudo coloring basically now have a look at this image i am not able to see the thyroid gland at all whatever the isotope injected is taken by the salivary glands and the other background is going to be more but not the thyroid gland it means that gland is not functioning hypothyroid what about this whatever the isotope i have injected everything is taken by the thyroid gland we are not able to see the background activity as well as the salivary gland it means that its function is very high we call it as hyperthyroid what about this right lobe is normal the left lobe you see there is a cold spot which we call this nodule in the thyroid like this we can study about the thyroid function this is the bone scan what is this bone scan view see as soon as the isotope is injected there is a technetium 99m with mdp methylene diphosphonate goes throughout the body bilaterally you can compare see the uptake here 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 you know all same this is anterior imaging this is posteriorly imaged here also both the side it is same so it is called as normal bone scan have a look here here you see the isotope in this ribs are more in the asthma it is more look at in the posterior the vertebra here it is more here it is more and i also can take a spot views of various regions see isotope is more here here this is a classical case of metastasis so this sort of information you can get from bone scan okay so this is the basic information i would like to share with all of you the fundamental principle of nuclear medicine imaging now let us see the second sub topic in this session that is called as emission tomography the principle of tomographic imaging in nuclear medicine is based on the detection of radiation from the patient at different angles it is called as emission computed tomography it is something similar to the ct scan where patient is going to be lying on the table 
and CT scan will be rotating around the patient. Similarly, here also the patient will be lying on the table and the gamma camera will be moving around the patient 360 degree. Hence, this is called as emission computer tomography. There are two types of emission tomography are there. One is called as single photon emission computer tomography. Colloquially, we call it as spect imaging. The emitting radionuclide, what we use for this study is gamma rays. Why we call it as single photon emission computer tomography means graphy means recording, tomo means cross sectional view, single photon emission means the patient what we inject in emit gamma rays of single energy so we call it as single photon emission which we call it as single photon emission computer tomography. The other tomography is positron emission tomography where the emitting radionuclide we use is beta plus that is positron. Electron with negative charge is called as electron. Electron with positive charge is called as positron. And this positron is used to get the tomographic section. We call it as positron emission tomography. Let us see about the working principle of SPECT, that is single photon emission computer tomography. In planar imaging, whatever we have seen so far, the patient is stationary, the camera is also stationary, the camera will record an image from one perspective, that is in single direction. So as soon as we give the radioactive isotope, patient will emit gamma rays and the gamma rays which strikes the gamma camera will be captured and finally an image is formed from single or one perspective we call it. But in case of a spect imaging, the camera rotates around the patient 360 degree. Recording is done at multiple angle and multiple images are produced and that are going to be reconstructed into a 3D data set by a computer. This is called a SPECT imaging. SPECT is nothing but a 3D version of a 2D planar imaging. Here, we use one or two gamma camera for recording purpose which rotate around the patient. SPECT is nothing but the conventional scintigraphic imaging that is planar imaging plus the tomographic method combinedly is called as spect imaging. There are two types of rotation in spect imaging. One is called as circular orbit rotation. Other one is called as elliptical body contour rotation. What is circular orbit? Circular orbit means can you see the red color? It moves in a circular fashion. Here, the distance between the camera surface and the patient doesn't change. All the direction it is going to be same. In anteriorly, it is less comparative closer to the patient and compared to the lateral side or posterior side. But this will give moderate resolution only because of the air gap. But when you see the elliptical one, that is a purple color here, the collimator surface, that is the camera, is closer to the patient, hence we get a high resolution image. In terms of accusation and spect, there are two techniques are there. One is called as step and shoot accusation, other one is called as continuous accusation. Let us see about first technique, step and shoot accusation. Here, a gamma camera rotates slowly in a circular orbit around the patient lying on a couch. For example, every 6 degree, the camera gets halts, accusation is done for 20 to 30 seconds 
and accurate view of the patient. Totally like this, 60 views are taken throughout the 360 degree view. And the scan time is going to be approximately 30 minutes for this. And this technique is called a step and shoot technique. Continuous technique means here the camera movement is going to be continuous. There is no stoppage in between. The data acquisition is going to be continuously with no gap because of the movement during the acquisition there will be decreased resolution. As I said camera is moving during the acquisition it will result in decreased resolution. So one is called as step and shoot effect other one is called as continuous effect. Let us put in a nutshell and tell the working principle of spect. For example, this is a blood vessel where we inject the radioactive isotope intravenously. As soon as I inject the isotope, which is in liquid form, enters the circulatory system. As soon as the radioactive material goes through the circulatory system, it emits gamma rays. We have a device called as gamma camera. And the gamma ray strikes the detector here that is made up of sodium ionized crystal, thallium dope, convert the gamma rays into a light photon, which is converted into electrical signal by photomultiplier tube, given to the electronic circuit, processing happens, and finally you see a beautiful image on the monitor. So this is a gamma camera which is going to move around the patient. Whatever the gamma ray is emitted, captured by the gamma camera here, the data are going to be cured here, it's converted into an electronic data, finally you get a beautiful image on the monitor. As I said beginning, in the beginning, here when the isotope is accumulated in one particular area more, we call it as hot spot. If it is going to be accumulated less, we call it as cold spot. That's how it is going to appear. Compared to the other region, it is more dark. So we call it as hot spot. Uptake is more actually. When compared to the other area, there is no uptake in this region. We call it as a cold spot. It means that there is no uptake at all of isotope. Let us see some images. See some images, cross-sectional images, which is done in spectraging. What I am going to show you is the cardiac spect. Can you see, there are two rows of information here. This row tells about the rest imaging. This row tells about the stress imaging, that is after exercise. Can you see this? This is the left ventricle of the heart. You see here, either in the rest or in the stress image, the isotope uptake is uniform in rest as well as in the stress study. So this is going to be called as normal spect imaging of cardiac uh, image. What about this? Same left ventricle. This is a rest image. This is the stress one. You see in both the condition or both the image, the uptake at this part is okay little bit. But what about this area? What about this area? It's a poor uptake and here no uptake at all. Here also you see a very poor uptake of isotope in this region. This is going to be termed as infarct. Irreversible coefficient defect is there. So this sort of information we can get from spect imaging. That means we are actually getting the cross-sectional information of a particular organ of interest. So what I have shown here is the cardiac spect imaging. We also can do quantification in spec because we are getting a three dimensional data with the help of the software. For example, we can calculate the ejection fraction of the left ventricle, end diastolic volume, end systolic volume, stroke volume. So, all these data can be accurate or can be processed and we get additional information which is not possible in the planar imaging. Coming to the advantages over the normal planar imaging, improved contrast and reduced structural noise 
due to the elimination of overlapping structures. Localization of defects is more precise in spectrum imaging and more clearly it is seen compared to the planar imaging. Another beautiful advantage is the extent and size of the tumor can be easily defined which normally not possible in the regular planar imaging.